We're getting ready for our next bike trip and there were a few things that we carried last time that we didn't love. So we thought we'd share with you what those things were, what we're using instead, and why. And I'm also gonna share one piece of gear that I was excited about and then after I tested it on a shakedown tour, I'm not gonna bring it with us. We should mention that we're not sponsored by any of these brands, so this is just our opinion. But we also have some links to the gear that we do like in the description and if you click on those and buy something then we get a small commission from them. We've made a couple changes to our cockpit. One that we're excited about is moving away from the quad lock mounting system to a Peak Designs mounting system in case for our phones. The main reason that we're making this switch is that the Peak Designs mount is just so much easier to use. With the quad lock, you have to find the right angle to get it to attach, and that gets easier with time, but it's always just a little bit clumsy. I will be the first to admit that I'm not a very good cyclist, and there are so many times when I took my phone off the quad lock mount to take a photo, and then I just could not get it back onto the mount, and a lot of times I would just throw it into my handlebar bag, which meant that I couldn't navigate until I stopped and reattached it to the bike. Comparing this with the Peak Designs mount, you basically just throw the phone at the mount and magnets pull it into place, wiggle it a bit, and a couple other clips grab it and you're good to go. With the Peak Designs case, I just feel so much more confident taking my phone off of the mount, taking a picture, and then putting it right back on. The Peak Designs mount is also more customizable. You can turn it in a couple different orientations and then also attach it to the handlebars in a couple different ways whereas the quad lock mount there's a tab that you push to take the phone off of the mount and you can't change the orientation of that tab and so it just limits the the number of ways that you can set it up on your handlebars i don't have a whole lot of space on my handlebars and so i had to get a handlebar accessory mount to be able to mount that and my gopro camera onto my handlebar it just was not a long term Fix. Another nice thing about the Peak Designs case is that you can trigger the release from either side of the phone instead of the tab on just the one side. It is more expensive than the quad lock system. The quad lock costs about $70 for the mount and phone case, while the Peak Design system costs about $110 for the mount and case. We also like the styling of the case a little bit better and it comes in two colors so our phones don't look exactly the same. The quad lock case that we had also didn't come with a MagSafe system which they now do, but Peak Designs comes standard with the MagSafe, which has been really nice and allows for more accessory use, like a cool little tripod. The Peak Designs mount is also a little bit heavier, but for me it comes out to lighter because I don't have to use that accessory bar. So the next piece of gear that I'm switching out on my cockpit is a Blackburn carry-all stem bag, and I'm replacing it with a Swift Industries Sidekick stem pouch. The Swift Industries bag is just a little bit more streamlined. It also doesn't require a strap on my handlebar, so just a little bit more space for my hands. It also doesn't have this long strap that went down around my fork, which, I don't know, it never really got in the way, but I just didn't like it. I'm looking forward to using the Swift Industries bag because my handlebar bag is a Swift Industries bag as well, and I've been really happy with that. The other major change to our cockpit is switching our GoPro mount from the standard GoPro handlebar mount to a ball-based camera mount from RAM mounts. I know this only applies to people who mount their cameras to their handlebars, but I think there's enough of us out there that it's worth mentioning. The official GoPro handlebar mount mounts very close to the handlebar, which doesn't allow much flexibility and perspective, and turning the mount was always very clunky. Plus the quick release clips seemed to be a weak point and one of them did break on us near the end of the trip. The new RAM mounts allow us to twist the camera in all sorts of angles and will hopefully provide for some more interesting shots on our next trip. Plus they feel really durable, it's easy to take the GoPros on and off of them, and they can actually hold more than just the GoPros. Basically, we're just really excited about this new streamlined cockpit setup. In Turkey, we had used a Katahdin B-free water filter with a Sawyer squeeze as a backup, and for the next trip, we'll be bringing two B-frees. They work faster, they're easier to fill, and they're much easier to clean the filter in the field as well. The next big change for me is that I got a new sleeping bag. I brought my old 20 degree enlightened equipment quilt to our local consignment store and replaced it with a 30 degree catabatic quilt. When I bought my old bag, I read that side sleepers would appreciate a wide bag, so I, I bought the wide size and it turned out to just be a little bit too much space for me, plus it was a little bit long. I also learned that I really hate 10D fabric. It's the fabric that a lot of the lightest quilts are made out of. Even though I wear my sleeping clothes at night, it still just feels really clammy and I just feel like I'm sleeping in a trash bag. The, the new bag is made out of Pertex and we just took it on our shakedown trip and it was so comfortable and I'm really excited to use it. So this is going to be my bag for the work seasons and then I'm gonna pick up a colder bag for the shoulder seasons. 
We also switched out our outdated GoPro 5 for a new GoPro 11. In Turkey we had used a GoPro 5 and a GoPro 10 and the GoPro 5 really had terrible image stabilization and the color profile was hard to match with the other GoPro and our phones. Plus for some reason the videos always seem to come out a little bit blurry and hopefully our future videos will look much better because of this change. Okay, so the piece of gear that I was really excited about that I decided that I'm not going to bring. I had been biking in Chacos on our last trip, which wasn't originally the plan, but on our first day of our last trip, I actually fell at some point and hit my ankle so badly that any kind of pressure anywhere near it really, really hurt. And so I couldn't wear my closed-toed shoes. It actually took about six weeks for my ankle to heal. And in that time, I realized that I really actually like biking in sandals. But I didn't really like how clunky the Chacos were and the, the soles kind of wore out more quickly than I expected them. To. So I wanted to try something new and I try, decided to try the bedrock sandals, but we went on a short trip this last weekend and the trip ended up being a little bit more adventurous than we had originally planned. Um, but it was pretty clear to me that the bedrock sandals couldn't handle the kinds of things that the Chacos could. I had been wearing them for weeks, I had already gotten a little bit used to the between the toe style, but they just really hurt my feet. So I decided to bring Chacos again on this next trip. So if anybody wants to make a pair of adventure sandals that have a thinner but still durable sole and don't rely on a between the toe system, I'm all ears. And I've already tried the Zero shoes, those are a little bit too thin. What about you? What kind of gear changes are you making this year? Let us know in the comments. Thanks and see you next time.